A more cheerful piece of work is Solaris. Solaris is a 1961 fiction novel, science fiction novel, by the renowned Polish, Polish uh, writer Stanislaw Lem. In Solaris, there's this crew of scientists. They are on a research station. And they, are, they, are, they are at work trying to come to grips and understand and, and glom an extraterrestrial terrestrial intelligence. But it's an unusual extraterrestrial intelligence. It has the form of a vast ocean on, a, on an alien planet, an eponymous alien planet, uh, the titular alien planet, Solaris. It's a wonderful, amazing novel, very, very disconcerting and disquieting, and yet somehow mysteriously kind of liberating. Solaris is the chronicle of the futile attempted communication with this extraterrestrial life. It's a distant alien planet. It's covered with an ocean of gel. And this ocean of gel is actually a single entity. It's just this whole planet is covered with a single organism. And so the scientists think that they conjecture that it's probably living. It's probably a sentient being. And so they say, why not communicate with it? And there's this guy, Chris Kelvin, a psychologist, what else? And he arrives aboard the Solaris station. And the scientists there have studied the planet and studied the ocean for many decades, etc., etc. But they, they kind of get nowhere. And they get nowhere because every time they repeat an experiment, scientific experiment, they get a different result. And it's not clear whether these different results are because this organism, this entity, is frustrating their efforts, or because science as we, had, we have known it cannot be applied on this planet for some mysterious reason. And so there's a whole discipline that had evolved over these decades, and it called, it's called solaristics. And it's simply observing, recording, and categorizing the phenomena that occur on the surface of the ocean. And so there's this enormous compilation of nomenclature and phenomena and, and so on, but there's no understanding. There's no understanding. They can't get to, to the root of it all. And so shortly before Kelvin, this, the psychologist, arrives, the crew expose the ocean to an aggressive and unauthorized experiment with a high energy X-ray bombardment. And Having done that, suddenly there are unexpected results. All of them are subjected to the ocean's retribution. Having intruded into this single organism via um, various layers, having, having leveraged X-rays to see the inner aspect of this organism, the deeper hidden dimensions then suddenly the personalities of these scientists come to life. It's like the ocean, the entity, uh, materializes, actualizes, and realizes physical, physical manifestations. It's like ectoplasm in spiritualism. And so each one of them comes across their deepest fears people they loved and had died, their sadness and sorrow, the, the ocean exposes them to everything that's been repressed and suppressed, everything they had forgotten, every trauma they had blocked off in firewall, the ocean exposes them, exposes them to this, and so they fall apart. Kelvin, for example, confronts memories of his dead lover and the guilt about her suicide, and it's harrowing, it's tormenting and... and, and they, they disintegrate. And all other researchers are exposed to the same, the same experience. Lem wrote, the peculiarity of those phenomena seems to suggest that we observe a kind of rational activity. But the meaning of this seemingly rational activity of the Solarian ocean is beyond the reach of human beings. And so it's a sentient alien. And this sentient alien has the capability to provoke in human beings their deepest fears, insecurities, regrets, remorse, sorrows, 
sadness, emotions, is able to dysregulate them and destroy them in the process. I have never heard of a better encapsulation of the relationship with the narcissist. Using the dual mothership principle and entraining, brain, brain entraining, this is exactly what the narcissist does to his so-called intimate partners and insignificant others. Now I've dwelt upon, I've dealt with entraining and the dual mothership principle in previous videos, most notably my dialogues with Richard Grannon and with Charles, uh, which you can find on, on this channel.